Coming up tonight on YCN News, it's the 45th anniversary of Earth Day. And we update developments in a weekend murder. For more news, weather and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont and Windsor County. News, sports, weather and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, it's Wednesday, April 22nd. I'm Abby Peel, welcome to YCN News. Today is the 45th anniversary of Earth Day. It's a day to take stock of the natural environment and remind ourselves not to take its beauty for granted and to make plans to clean up neglected land areas. On that note of natural resource protection, the governors of New Hampshire and Vermont proclaimed Earth Day in each state. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders in a news release says climate change is a real problem, an earthly threat, and must be acted upon. In New Hampshire, maintaining and preserving its natural beauty is a top priority for lawmakers because tourism is a major source of income. Governor Maggie Hassan says the state's unmatched natural beauty attracts visitors from around the globe. It's part of the state's culture. Today, she encouraged all Granite Staters to recommit themselves to protecting New Hampshire's natural resources for generations to come. Climate change and greenhouse gas emissions remain areas where the state, through its laws, must be taken seriously. Beautifying the landscape is important. Everyone can play a part in this goal. From citizens picking up trash and recycling at home to businesses reducing energy use, all of us can help improve the natural world we see daily. Earth Day in Vermont will be mar marked by an expansion of the Heat Saver Loan Program. Governor Peter Shumlin says in a statement that loans will be available for property owners who want to make their homes energy efficient. In turn, utility bills may be lowered with the installation of high energy efficient water boilers and furnaces. Now the loans will also cover weatherization, solar hot water, biomass heat and other emerging technologies. Financing will help av be available to help property owners cover upfront costs for these efficient energy upgrades. To learn more, go online to efficiencyvermont.com. There's another update in the search for a man charged with allegedly murdering a man in Springfield, Vermont over the weekend. State police have arrested the girlfriend of suspect Gregory Allen Smith for helping elude capture. Smith is accused of shooting Wesley Wing in front of a convenience store on South Street in Springfield. Christian Wal Kristen Walsh of Keene, New Hampshire, now faces two felonies, hindering apprehension and witness tampering. Police from Keene worked with their counterparts in Vermont and continue to do so to locate Smith. Smith also allegedly stole a white 2004 Buick Rendezvous to leave the area. If you have any information about the whereabouts of Gregory Allen Smith, contact police or call 911. Coming up on YCN News, Claremont continues its pitch for a pumpkin festival and it's a weekend to visit Charlestown, New Hampshire as we take you back to the year 1757. We'll look at weather and sports too when YCN News returns. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News, I'm Abby Peel. A Fire in Chester, Vermont last Saturday destroyed the home and caused about $250,000 in damages. The home at 2703 Green Mountain Turnpike is owned by Paul Meredith of Portsmouth, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, according to a news release. It was shortly before midnight that firefighters were called to the blaze. The home had been vacant for several years, Vermont State Fire investigators have said. The fire is deemed to be of suspicious origin. Anyone with information about the fire is asked to call police at the numbers shown on your screen. In other New Hampshire news, Claremont City Councilors may learn more about a plan to bring the Pumpkin Festival, formerly held in Keene, to Claremont. Grassroots group Concerned Citizens of Claremont is expected to discuss the plan with the Council tonight. YCN News will update you on this in tomorrow's broadcast.
If you're looking for an interesting way to learn about life in pre-revolutionary war in New England, consider attending a program this Saturday at Fort No. 4 in Charlestown, New Hampshire. Historian John Eric Nelson will speak about the life and times of Garrison Commander Lieutenant Colonel Nathan Whiting. He'll take you to the year 1757 when 500 soldiers from Connecticut headed north to defend Fort No. 4, the most northern part, most settlement on the Connecticut River. Whiting would oversee the soldiers, all of whom kept an eye out for French soldiers and Native Americans. This is the days for the French and Indian War of 1763. Remember, this also is before the American Revolution. Whiting served for 12 years in the service of Majesty King George II. Coming up tonight on YCN News in tonight's Kearsarge Chronicle, Carter Bascom interviewed New London Rotary President Charlie Foss. We'll bring you their discussion when YCN News returns. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Mike Pizzone. Things started out nice enough today, but rain eventually worked its way in, and it looks like there is a decent chance we'll be seeing more of that in the coming days. Showers will likely continue until about 10 p.m. tonight, with a low of 37 degrees and winds maxing out at about 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow will be a cool one with mostly cloudy skies and a high of just 48 degrees, and there's a 30% chance we could see some showers throughout the day. Skies will remain mostly cloudy tomorrow evening with a low of 30 degrees. Friday looks to be nearly identical to tomorrow's forecast with mostly cloudy skies, a high of 48, and a 30% chance of showers throughout the day. Temperatures will bottom out at 33 degrees Friday evening. Now let's take a look at our community calendar to see what's happening in the area. The Commons editor Jeff Potter is hosting a free clinic at the Rockingham Free Public Library in Bellows Falls, Vermont called Learn How to Edit Your Own Writing tomorrow from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Call the number on the screen for more information. The Claremont Eagles Club on Washington Street in Claremont, New Hampshire is hosting a karaoke night tomorrow beginning at 7 p.m. All are welcome to attend. The Sullivan County Humane Society will hold a rabies clinic on Saturday from 9 a.m. until noon at the First Baptist Church on North Main Street in Newport, New Hampshire. Shots are $10 apiece and appointments aren't necessary. Believe it or not, there are still some baseball teams in the area who have yet to have played a regular season game, but yesterday I got a chance to see a pair of Cross River rivals go at it in their openers. The Stevens baseball team showed no signs of rust in its first official outing of the spring, earning a 19-0 victory over a neighboring Windsor in six innings. And it was all about ace pitcher Chase Hussey for the Cardinals, as the senior opened his 2015 campaign with a no-hitter in which he fanned 14 batters and walked just one. Hussey helped his cause from the plate as well, finishing with five RBI, including a three-run homer in a sixth inning in which Stevens crossed the plate 12 times. Senior catcher Briar Roliard also had a big day at the plate, driving in two runs, including what proved to be the game winner in the top of the first, when this two-out double plated Hussey from second. Brandon Bell also drove in multiple runs for the visiting team, finishing with five RBI on three hits. For Windsor, starting pitcher Nick Kapazinski threw well despite suffering the loss, allowing three earned runs on six hits through four innings of work. He didn't walk a batter and struck out three. I spoke with Hussey after the game, who gave a lot of credit to Rolliard behind the plate for calling what proved to be a great game. Briar's calling a lot of it. I relied on him, I basically on every pitch. A couple of them I shouldn't have threw like off speed because I made a bad read on a couple of them, like a couple ground balls. I should have just threw a fastball because they were too late on it. And I threw him a change up and they caught up and they hit a grounder. So that's stuff I personally need to work on, really read the batter's reactions to my pitches. Hussey also credited his team's offense for breaking things open early, which he said is something they'll need to continue going forward. It's great because last couple years we haven't really had the best offense, so to have our team come out and hit the ball like we did today is really going to boost our confidence and we'll keep doing what we're doing. Stevens coach Paul Silva said the win was a great way to start the season, especially with what he saw both at the plate and in the field. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a nice, it always like start off, um, you know, with, with a win. And Chase just threw the ball great. Not only did he throw the ball great, but you, you saw what he can do at the plate. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things today. We, we put the ball in play with men on base, and that's that's a good start. Uh, I was real happy with the way we hit the ball. Um, you know, we, we had hit the ball well in the scrimmage earlier down at Franklin Pierce. Not so well Saturday, but that was against Newport, who had some good pitching. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a real good start. I, you know, it's, it's nice to get, uh, I thought Drew, our freshman and second baseman, did a great job. And uh, so it's a real nice way to start the, start the season. The Cardinals will try to improve to 2-0 tomorrow when they host Newfound. Windsor will also be back in action tomorrow as they travel to face Mill River. Things were reversed on the softball field as it was Windsor who opened its season with a convincing victory over the Cardinals. Emily Williams led the Yellow Jackets from the plate with three hits and four RBI, while Aaron Werricke drove in three runs and a pair of hits. Ashley Bly earned the win from the circle, striking out three and walking one in five innings of work. Ashley Inns played well for Stevens, finishing with three hits. The Green Mountain baseball team benefited from plenty of offense in its showdown with Springfield, but it was the pitching of John Little that really paved the way for the victory. Little tossed all five innings for the Chieftains, needing just 89 pitches to help his team clinch a 2-0 start to the season. The Hanover boys lacrosse team earned another narrow victory yesterday, this time with help from a nifty save by goaltender Xander Lingelbach Pierce with just 10 seconds left in its game against Yarmouth, Maine. Jin Kim and Connor Austin led the offense with three goals apiece, helping the Marauders improve to 3-1 on the season. That does it for YCN Sports, I'm Mike Pizzone. Thanks, Mike. Capital Connections, John O'Connor brings us part one of an interview with Carrie Rochford Haig, community educator for Turning Points Network. She'll talk about how to stop bullying at school and other violence prevention issues when YCN News continues. The YCN News continues in a moment.